Yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? Um, on this episode, we do listener mail. We give you kind of a, a background of what we do on our Patreon page uh, with the listener mail that we do um, behind the scenes, behind the paywall. On this episode, we take questions about erectile dysfunction. Um, I just I, I review the uh, the new the number one movie on Netflix, which is insane, The Ultimatum. Um, we talk the about series, arch- yeah. the series. I we, we talk about archetypes, different types of archetypes, erectile dysfunction, and how to talk to somebody. Uh, initially, the, the initial opening, we go into the technical aspect of that. Yeah, um, this is a sample of what we do over at Patreon, patreoncom slash manschool 202 where uh, we answer a lot of listener mail. We do bonus content, and then we keep going. Actually, this episode, we keep doing listener mail. And we answer listener mail questions about uh, getting back to the good sex you originally had and also being the importance of being honest when you compliment the woman and how to lay the five bricks, as we say. I want to say something, too. Uh, Patreon is your direct access to me and Harry. Yeah. Um, so if you need that direct access, that's where you go. Sign up for the Patreon. Um, it helps us keep doing what we've been doing. And I, I mean, I appreciate you. And if you can't, you can't afford it, it's fine. You can get all the episodes on YouTube and on clips and on iTunes Instagram. and wherever you download uh, the podcast and the website as well. So and enjoy uh, the show. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first. Because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. Uh, what's going on, How You ready to rock and roll? Absolutely, man. Always ready. Always ready. We, uh, we got to, you know, we're trying to take care of the fans and take care of the people who do these, do these uh, listener mails. Um, I got a lot of questions, a lot of people asking questions, and I really want people to help us out and subscribe to the Patreon, so we're trying to bring them a little more content, give them a little insensitive. Everybody says uh, we helped them and they changed their life. How many times have you heard that? Oh, all the time. At least a Uh, couple times a week for me. Well, we need help. We need help. We gotta, you know, I'm starving here. Look at me. I'm... I'm, my ribs are showing. <laughs> you mean your barbecue ribs that you my, ordered? Well, my barbecue yeah. ribs, my short ribs. Um, so, so, you know, follow us on uh, Man School Two Hundred Two. It's our page www.patreon. Uh, yeah, backslash. usually we do we we'll, we'll do the listener mails just exclusively on Patreon, but we're giving you a little taste of what we do over at Patreon with the uh, bonus content and the listener mail. So yeah. So let's get how you you good though how, how you feeling? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Yeah, yeah, I'm just you know busy. You know the I'm I'm tired. I'm not I'm tired, but you know that tired of like there's a lot of bullshit going on. Yeah. You know whether it's career or you know I saw a thing on Instagram once or it was a TikTok where if you ever ask a man how he's feeling, he goes I'm tired. He yeah. goes that that means a lot of different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means yeah. A, a bunch of different things at once. Yeah. That's like seven different things that you just categorize. Ah, I'm just tired. I'm just tired. I mean, yeah, you got the work is the work. It's hard. Trying to do the stand up is hard. Trying to keep this show on every week is hard. You know, it's just a lot. Balancing yeah. a relationship. My and then then you got these little things. I got a little flood in the basement. That happened. Then my uh, brother okay. leaving me his two dogs. He went on vacation. I'm watching these two fucking untrained dogs. And it's not yeah. their fault, but you know, my brother doesn't. He just teaches them how to walk, but they shit and piss everywhere. And I'm doing it because my... They already walking, huh? Oh, they the already dog? know how to walk. He, he didn't have to teach them how to walk. He teaches... Yeah, that's true, too. He barely even had to teach him that. But, yeah. you know, I'm watching these two fucking dogs, and they're sweet dogs. It's not their fucking fault, but my yeah. brother didn't train them, so they're just pissing and shitting everywhere. But I'm doing it as a favor to my brother because I owe him some favors. And he helped happens. me out. He's my brother. He helped me out. I got to help him out. But yeah. anyway, that's that. All that... And then you don't have time to say all that. You just go, uh, yeah, tired. Man, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I could use a um, a Red Bull, an Red Bull espresso, something right now. Shit, but... you got anything in the studio? What we got left over there? I haven't been there in a while. Uh, there's no Red Bull in here. Fuck, um, man. But you know, whatever. We'll there's got to actually... be a bag of blow there somewhere that one of our guests left man, behind, right? I wouldn't doubt it. There's, I know there's definitely weed, but I don't need to smoke that. That that'll really yeah. That that's not gonna fucking... give you the energy funk but well i will ma- i will plow on 
Yeah. Um, Just lean into that mic. I don't know why it's a little low for some reason. How about now? Yeah, it's just perfect. 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 Okay. Um, yeah, I'm trying to get be comfortable because we got a lot of lot to get into, and I want to make sure that I'm comfortable. Yeah, just as long as you're close to it, because yeah. it's real sensitive today for some reason. Yeah. But. Um. So we 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 did a shout out, and keep that in mind, everybody. Um, constantly send us questions, um, so we can uh, answer what you want. You know, answer the things and the questions that you have because it's important that we engage you and give you what you want. And if there's something that you want, you'd like to see, um, let, you know, do that, do that. Uh, I just watched um, The Ultimatum on Netflix last night. That's there's the a, dating show? Oh, I don't what know if it? you could call it dating. So it's... Oh, uh, what do they do? It's like fuck so, one of those fuck island shows that they do? Something like it, but yeah. it's not, a, not on the island. <laughs> So it's people that have been dating for a couple of years in their mid twenties, mid to late twenties. Sure. Um, and uh, the one of the persons on the uh, the 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 cup in the couple is giving an ultimatum: marry me, or I'm out. Mm. Which is interesting because I always say never don't give ultimatums. Make ultimate decisions. Don't give ultimatums. What that means is if you're fighting with somebody to prove to them that you, you're you worthy of marriage or worthy of their company or worthy of whatever it is, yeah, the answer is you already got your answer. You already got your answer. And if you don't have your answer and you have somebody where you go through this process where you're proving to somebody that you're worthy, you 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 lo- you're already you're fucked. You're fucked. I mean, it's not a good settled. start at all. Yeah, no. and in in relationships where things change and people are trying to figure out how to how to be together, even though they they come from a different kind of emotional culture, um, it's just a bad thing to start out that way. Um. So, but this is what they do. This is the format of the show. So it's eight couples. They all come. Somebody has issued an ultimatum. What they do is they bring them on this this kind of rooftop in this hotel, and they have three days of dates. They get to date the other significant others of the people who of of the other couples. So it's eight guys, eight girls. Everybody gets to date each other. Right. After three days, they figure out what, um, uh, which people that they have a connection with. Um, and after those three days, they pick to have a little uh, a fake marriage, three week marriage. Okay. So you move in with the somebody else's significant other, and you. Uh, you live with them for three weeks. Then after the three weeks, you live with your original spouse for three weeks. Uh, hopefully, I mean, most of them have not already been living together. Right, right. Uh, they live together for three weeks, a kind of mock marriage. And then at the end, they decide whether they're going to get married or they're going to, you know, they're going to get married or they're going to go their separate way. Mm. And watch this there's every every archetype that I could possibly remember there's, there's this blonde chick who's basically saying yeah you know love is important but I want a guy I don't want to work and I want a guy I'm doing fine with my money but I make more money than my man and I'm not going to be with somebody who I'm not going to get engaged to somebody unless he's making more money than me I want to do better than I am now Mind you, this what an awful bitch already. What an awful, awful b- person. And That's she's got awful. a horse face. Oh boy, fucking horse a, face. That's just a terrible person right off the bat to go. What a horse face. Well, yeah. I mean, listen, she can't help that. <laughs> I mean, she could actually with the money. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. But you well, can only do so much. But that I can almost understand. There's a lot of horse faces out there, but. You make money, right? And you already, and it's not enough. I need somebody who makes more money than me. Yeah, so yeah. I'm already financially secure. Right. So usually it's like I need, you know, I'm I'm broke. I need someone to support me. I almost understand that. Like I, you know, yeah. I need someone to take care of me. She has the money. She's like, 
It's just not enough. And you know what? Right there is all you need to know about her. It will never be enough. Never It'll never better. be enough. Right. That's it. So uh, another girl, uh, pretty age, smoking hot people on it too, but uh, pretty Asian chick talks in the third person. You know, April don't, April don't, April is somebody who is interesting. And if you think you're going to find somebody better than April, you must be crazy because he's talking April, in the third person. Talking in the third person, flag number one, two, I guess. Uh, just she issues Wait, the ultimatum. Wait, this is also this is also the the woman who's making good money but wants somebody. No, to make no, some the, money? that was the blonde. Then gotcha. the Asian girl was third person. She's gonna she's gonna issue an ultimatum, and he's gonna realize that he's missing out and gonna marry her because he's gonna see. Uh, kind of West Indian or Jamaican, maybe Jamaican. Uh, grew up a princess. Just, I'm the greatest thing in the world. When you're going to put a ring on it, you want to be with me. He's not sure. Mm. And he's making excuses. Naturally, he's not making excuses because she's a bitch. He's making excuses because she is, uh, he's, he needs to have his finances together. That's what he's saying before he, yeah. Yeah. Another guy, guy is who's kind of, you know, Grew out of foster care or like rough life, kind of from the streets, you know. Mm. And uh, he's with a girl who's too sweet, and she's uh, she doesn't express herself and doesn't speak up. And uh, he he wants he won't marry her because she won't communicate with him and some other, which is another fucking cop out. Uh, another girl that doesn't want to have kids. Another girl that does she, she just, she's not sure about having kids. Another girl who uh, is with a guy who's super nice. The guy's too nice because he caters to her every whim. She doesn't feel the spark. Naturally, you love that one, Harry. Mm, I love uh, the spark. <laughs> the spark. The spark. <laughs> you dope. Uh, <laughs> the spark. It's not a spark. You got to create. It's not just a magic. Fuck. I don't know. It's also people who blame things just on religion and just on, you know, the horoscopes, just on this, just on that. It's just what dumb, you bring just to it. Just on dumb. Yeah. It's just, just on stupid. It's what you bring to it. If you believe in all those other things, whatever. But that's it's not not ma it's not a magic trick. Yeah. If we have spark, it's because I and on, on our first date, and, and it's interesting for people to for dudes to understand this. The spark is my ability to gather information and make sure that I understand what your likes are and what you don't like and how I'm able to string those things together so that you can go, wow, this is great. You know, mm. if you you got a you got a great date plan, but you haven't figured out the logistics of parking and it has, happens to be a thunderstorm, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden you find a park in the city and then you got to walk three blocks and she's got to walk in the rain and you didn't you forgot the umbrella or even if the umbrella wasn't big enough or you couldn't find a, a parking space close enough or you didn't drop her off and then go park or whatever the fuck you're supposed to do. All of a sudden there's no the spark has been put out by the uh, the spark's been put out by the rain and by the rain. Yeah, by the weather. By the weather. Yeah, so they got all the archetypes here on this. They got they're every doing, archetype. Gonna, this is like the all-star game of like dumb dating shows. They, oh, yeah. they got everything. I like this. They combine. They go, we got to take everything that works. We got to do the wife swapping. All right. Yeah. We got to do wife swapping. Wife swapping. Got to do fuck island, even though it's not an island. But fuck we gotta, island. Fuck island. Then we got to do, uh, uh, you know, seven year switch married or don't married. Right. Uh -huh. right. Got a therapist. They got some therapists on there. Uh, no, it's just no. Mm, I mean, uh, Nick Lachey and his new wife. Oh boy, uh, are uh, hosting it, and uh, they're is that his uh, new wife. Uh, they've been married. Yeah, anyway. yeah, his new wife, his new wife, who actually gave him an ultimatum about. So I, I guess that's where they got the job. They got the idea for the for the. All right, all right. Gave well. him an, uh, and he uh, like yeah, well, you know whatever. She's hot and young. This I guess son of so. a bitch be staying on TV. <laughs> Every marriage he's on TV. 
He that's what that's his hustle. Nice, Getting smart, married yeah. and being on TV. So Okay. Anyway, so every archetype everything. you can yeah. think of. And uh and you could just see you could just see like it's, it's like I'm so in tune to the bullshit. <laughs> uh, you, oh, this is going to shit, right? Already, right? Well, I'll tell you what. The first step is going to shit is appear agreeing to appear on one of those TV shows. Yeah, yeah, the well, first that's... step, number one. But aside from that, what else did you see? This the the bullshit. And no sensible couple goes. We should air this out on national <sighs> global television. Okay, so the horse face bitch. Horse face. The horse face bitch. The blonde horse face bitch. She's dating with people, and she's right away. Yeah, Secretary Sea Biscuit. Sea Biscuit. She, she's going. Uh, you know, money is important to me. I mean, love is Terrible. important, but money is blah, blah 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 blah. And everybody's like, "Ooh, okay." You can see the guys that she's mingling with are going, "Oh, this this bitch is a problem immediately," right? Mm. Uh, naturally, now you get to pick who you want to spend the three weeks with. Whoever you have a spark with, you know what I mean? Okay. So it whoever look, makes your nature rise makes in your nature rise and whoever <laughs> makes you want to get a little stink on the hang down. Yeah. And, or spark uh, <laughs> or spark, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Uh, anybody that wants to put a little saver on your flavor saver. You know what I mean? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. So, All right. So she's she's awful. Everybody's turned off. There's one guy that's super nice. He wants to marry his girlfriend, but she's not sure, naturally, because he's too nice, yeah. right? And uh, so they got the reverse situation there, yeah. She 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 wants, doesn't appreciate the niceness. She, he doesn't have enough control. She decides that she wants the nice guy, good-looking guy, you know, kind of a cowboy type guy yeah. or whatever. Name might be Cody. In fact, his name was Cody. How about that? Shout out. Nice. Shout out to Cody. So he goes, um, <laughs> she goes, uh, you know, I really, I, you're the only one that I feel any vibe for. And he he says, you know, he's looking at her after she told him he, he, he needs to have more money to be with her. Whoever's with her needs to have wow. more money than her. He goes, I'm just really, I don't really think that we're a great fit. Uh-oh. Now that interests her. Oh, she, already she's being rejected, right? Uh, so well, now she, she's interested in this dude. Yeah, but she is an awful bitch because she just ignores it and plows through. She approaches him the next day, and he goes, look, I thought we had this conversation yesterday. He says, well, I just think that. And he goes, so he finally says to her, well, actually, I just don't find you attractive. Right? Oh, <laughs> Oh, good for Cody. Look at the big balls on Co Cody. Cody! Oh, get over ba -ba -ba here. You no from nobody. And, he, and then she goes, you know, you're real. Re so she walk, gets, takes the shot in the face, mm. takes two steps back, and then plows through again. What do you mean? You're just not a good person. So he she goes. You're just not a good person? So some, wow. so the guy, her boyfriend is talking to her. Her boyfriend is talking to another girl because they're all mingling. Yeah, yeah, you got on a rooftop couples. while they're all looking at. You know, it's not even a separate date. They're just mingling it's on the roof. It's even more uncomfortable. Fuck Island. That's the fuck, fuck Island, Island portion. Yeah. Uh, and he goes, she goes over to him and the girl and goes, uh, which is her boyfriend, Cody, the the girl that thinks he's too nice. You know, you say he's such a he's too nice, but he's really not. He's really an awful human being. And you need to understand that it just she just blasted because I don't like you because I don't like you. I'm a horrible. He's a horrible human being because right. how could he not like me? Maybe because what did he you, say? I just don't find you attractive. He, or you she, no, he said, listen, I, 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 I'm just I don't feel us that we have a connection. I don't feel he tried. He went the nice route. Yeah. Twice, right. she approached him again. You know, I don't even know why you would say that to me. She approached the next day. She approaches him again, and then he just goes, "I'm not. Uh, I'm just. I'm not attracted to you." He didn't even call her ugly. No, he just said, "I'm not attracted to you." I'm not. I'm just not my thing. Right. And so she snaps. So she decides, "Fuck you," and then goes over to the wife because he's gonna go. Oh, the I'm girlfriend. Gonna take, I'm gonna, or the girlfriend. I'm gonna take this out in yeah. case, just in case. I'm scorching the earth. Yeah. Well, fuck it. 
So nobody wants to pick her mm. as a as a obnoxiously very honest, like br brutally honest, um, up until cunty honest um, for no reason. Yeah, for no reason. And uh, looks like nobody's gonna. That's not even honest. That's uh, that's just being an asshole. Yeah, it's, just being, it's an, being asshole. an asshole, but using honesty as a cover. As a cover for to it. act like I, I just tell, I just speak the truth. I you tell don't. it like it is. I'm a. But you don't. Like Cam Newton said, "I'm a boss, bitch. Oh, I be geez. doing my shit. I'm a boss, bitch." Bah, 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 bah. So, anyway. Cam Newton. Oh, Did you didn't hear it? the thing about Cam Newton? Let's cover it. We the, could, the we quarterback. Could. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I'm not familiar with this. He, he, he made a. Uh, I get all my news from TikTok. If it doesn't happen on TikTok, uh, there's usually well, a day or it two delay. It should be on there. It should be on there. Okay, Cam. What did Cam Newton now? He back was on a podcast Carolina and Panthers. he said, "Look, you, you, you know, you want this and you want that. You a boss, bitch." He He's says, talking about women. Yeah, but he says, "Sweetheart, you can't even cook." Then wow. he goes, "You know, and you don't know when to shut up." And let a man lead, and you like, oh, you know, you talk too much. <laughs> I'm not disagreeing with Cam. I'm just thinking <laughs> the timing. You got one or two seasons left, Cam. You, you gotta. <laughs> how you gonna get that yogurt money, bro? What the you fuck? Can't, you can't you got do. Us. You can't do ex Activa. Yeah. If you, <laughs> they're not gonna. The Ozoaks or whatever Ozoaks. That's zero calorie yogurt. But meantime, bro. which is interesting yeah. because women can have standards, but men can't. Oh sure. Yeah, they can have their standards, opinion. I remember Sharon Osbourne going on, and I love Sharon Osbourne, by the way. I think she's great, but she did Yeah, some don't give clip. that disclaimer. Fuck no, that I do, because I think she's I, genuine. Well, because I don't like any of the other ones on the talk or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But it's not just because it's not about shitting. It's about being. The reason I give the disclaimer is because it's not about just hating. I Someone who I like, yeah. but as a woman, can say something that is, you go, that's not accurate or, or whatever. Right. So she was talking about they're making she's making fun of somebody getting their penis cut off uh -huh. and having thrown it down the garbage disposal. And she thought it was funny that it would be spinning around how right. funny it would be down the oh, garbage. That's disposal. hilarious. Right. And uh -huh. and, I, you know, no, I don't think she got in any trouble for that. But just the idea in reverse, if you talked about mutilating. Yeah. Mutilating. Woman, but there's like somebody's standard. tits yeah. in, the, in the garbage yeah. disposal. It's ridiculous. So. Yeah. You want me to? We, and I guess she's trying to be funny, but I don't. It wouldn't go. It would be okay the other way. It's my well, here's the bottom line with Cam Newton. Cam Newton can pick the woman that he wants. Yeah. And if he wants to have a woman that cooks, and as cleans, we all can, women can know, pick whoever they want. And so can they. But if if you a big bitch or if you ugly, if you're unattractive, I don't have to like you. I, hmm. don't, I don't have to, and I get to pick who I want. Just like you get to tell me I'm not good enough. My money, I don't make enough money. I get whatever. Yeah. We 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 both get to do that. By the way, here's another thing that I saw on uh, TikTok. A lot of TikTok news guys, but uh, <laughs> I didn't know this. Right, uh, this is something that. All right, so women, they they did a thing where they're asking women, you know, like what's your what's the optimal height on a man? Six three would be is super sexy, but I'll take six foot. Right. Right. Six foot is like I forget what the percentage is. It's yeah. like a minute percentage. The average yeah. height is like five nine or whatever. But a six foot guy, anything above six foot, that is almost like five percent of the population. Right, right. Maybe less than that. Right, but you. This is what you think is. It's the, crazy. This is your jam. This right, but not jam. only just is your jam, but if that's what you're looking for, you understand that you know from a mathematical standpoint, you have limited your dating pool. Yeah to less than 5%. And then on top of that, you got to find somebody who's six one, but is also fits your values, your how, uh, you know, facially, financially, financially, yeah. intellectually. It's, uh, you know, whatever you get to have your standards, you can do you what you to, want. You, yeah. could, you could want whatever you want, but you can't always get what you want. So keep that in mind. Hmm. Uh, so anyway, uh, so what happens is, so these are, this is the archetypes. So they're all picking who they like. Uh, certain people are attractive to multiple people, which is always the case. Sure, well, yeah. Um, and uh, this one guy who picks this girl that he thought he had a vibe with, he would, thought it would be a good fit, she picks somebody else. And, uh, and then he says, he's gonna, he whispers to another girl, I'm, a, I'm gonna pick you, right? Somebody else picks her, so all the options are flipping away. Off. 
the guy who another girl picks this guy who is the, the boyfriend to the the sea biscuit, right? Yes. Uh, and he gets up and he goes, "I uh, I'm I want to marry you. I want us to get married. I'm gonna I want to propose." He got on his knees and he proposed to her without going through the process of the whole three weeks, three weeks. This is wife night swapping. one. Fuck what night I'm, is this? This is. Night three. Night three. After the mingling, after the dating, whatever, he wow, goes, wow, wow. I want to marry you. And they, she agrees and they leave the fuck. They, they're out. They're or they're going to, they're, they're out of the thing. So every, so which cuts down the pool, the pool down to seven couples instead of eight. And people who wanted that guy don't get that guy. So there's another guy who was like a sec, second or third choice. He don't get a guy. He doesn't get a. He doesn't. He picks his choice. His choice is uh, it picks somebody else. So he's getting left behind. He stops and proposes to his girl the same night. Basically, so because he was getting left behind, he was like, he "I'll take what I desperate. got." Desperate. He got desperate. What the fuck? But yeah. then, I mean, how do you go back to that knowing, like, wait a minute, you only, you only want to marry me? And it's literally the the proposal I mean, it's all on the rooftop on the same on the same episode. They, they, one guy proposes because he wants this woman, this horrible dumpster fire of a woman, hmm. right? The other guy feels like he's getting left behind. He's not gonna have an option, and bam, he he uh. He he proposes to her, locks her in, and she they're having they're having an ultimatum because he she doesn't want to have children. Children is non negotiable. He says, I don't want to be without you, even if I have to be without you without children. No, big mistake. Big mistake. If you feel that strongly about it going into it, that's a huge one to give up. That's you can't even give up. And then she accepts boom they're off the fucking thing so there's couples that kind of the rest how of the do couple you, how do you not i mean again these are the dumbest of the dumb because who yeah. else goes on these shows um but i i don't understand how you don't think that that's going to be a problem long run hey i want to start a family and i want to uh, i don't want to do that okay i guess that's fine no worries let me ask you a question yeah how many times have we counseled dudes who are unhappy in their relationship? Sure, are afraid to to move on, afraid to to pursue whatever their happiness or the person that they want or a person that is like what they want, right. and they're willing to sacrifice. Which I can't even say they. they it's not even. They're not even happy. They're yeah, stating that. that this is, and they're going a. I'm sticking this out. Uh, I'm. I'm. Uh, this is all I got. I don't have no other options. I'd rather be with somebody than nobody. Yeah. How many times have we seen yeah. that? Yeah, you're right. I guess I there's mean, that desperation. You are right. Yeah. How about this? Make... More often than not, that is the case. Like that's not. In, I guess even that's the ex- all of what it is, really. I yeah. mean, that's all of what we deal with. Yeah, you're right. You're not wrong. It's just in my head. In my head, I, I'm putting too much. Here's all right. To be braggadocious. Here's when being too smart is a problem. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm analyzing all the numbers here. Well, how and could what this I'm work? How could you what I'm not to? seeing is that a guy just kicked the door in. You know what I mean? Like just yeah. it's like that. You ever see that internet thing where they're all like uh I guess they're in like World of Warcraft or some shit. They're yeah, all getting yeah. together, like, all right, guys, if we all go in together, we have a shot at winning. And one guy goes, Leroy Jenkins, and he just <laughs> runs on in and everyone gets killed. That's that's what I'm thinking. I'm not thinking. I'm thinking too logically, and this I forget. Is the, this is the lead up to uh, Suicide Squad 2. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody just killed on the beach. Right. What's funny is he had he had picked another girl. She picked somebody else. So he whispers to another girl that he has a connection, or thought he had a connection with, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick you. He says that to her. She picks somebody else. Immediately after right. that? Like well, it's going down the line. Everybody, everybody's getting chosen. It's, it's not cutting time. Yeah, yeah, say. yeah. He goes, I'm picking you. She goes, what? 
He's like, I'm picking you. This is after he picked another girl. And then when he when that chick picks somebody else, he goes, I here, I need to I need to say something. Gets on his knee I and he proposes to chick right after that. I, I'm like And she is, has seen this. She has seen this seen, happen. Yes. Yes. And she's his wife like, has seen this happen. He, and still, his well, his new fiance. And she whatever, he yeah, goes, sorry. Will you marry me? Wife. And he goes she goes, of course I will. Here's a, here's a, I want to say one thing and then let's move on because we should do a live watch on this. I would like to, yeah. Have let's you watched all of them yet or no? I watched them, but I'll watch them again. Watch them again? All right, we'll see what There's a do, moment yeah. where April, who talks to herself in the third person, sitting down with her dude, right? She's just overbearing. She's goes through his phone, just just a horrible bitch, right? Mm. Way overconfident. Smoking hot, though, but just a maniac. She goes, give me a kiss. No, she, she puckers her lips to throw him a kiss. He puckers his lips as if to throw her a kiss. Yeah. She waits. He realizes she's waiting. He gets up and then kisses her. Do you understand what I mean? Sure, sure. Yeah, they're both they're both in a situation where they both made the same. Wait, is she purposely making him come over there? I I don't think purposely, but subconsciously, she's selfish. So I want to kiss. Here's my lips, but she won't get out of her chair. They're sitting at a table, across, ah. a table for two. He go he goes to throw her a kiss. She he she waits. For him to get, uh, he gets up, and then he kisses her, and then sits back down. And the minute I see that, I go, "This, this, this relationship is doomed. This guy got to get out of this relationship because, yeah, it wasn't like the, so something." And people think I'm crazy because it's like, no, the small things are indicative of bigger things. Yes, because they 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 become a larger expression of the what it is is this woman felt like she was the prize. She didn't think that he was the prize. She thinks that he should know better because April is a bad bitch and that he needs to work at her. And, and, this is and he, all Lizzo's fault, giving uh, these people self-esteem and making these bad bitches. Know what your fucking worth is, even if you ain't worth shit. And this chick was bad, smoking hot, Asian chick, Doesn't crazy matter. body. Doesn't matter. But, Awful human being. The headache is still a headache, by the way. It doesn't matter how hot the chick is. Your <laughs> right. your, your temple still still you you still get ready to have a that stroke. That migraine still feels the you same. Gotta, you're close yeah. to a stroke. I mean, yeah. And I and then uh, so he hooks. He ends up picking this really sweet girl who who is understated. She's with her boyfriend, who's overbearing the, the fucking the dude from foster care. And he hooks up with. Her. And the minute he gets with her, and she listens to him talk he's like whatever i've been missing my whole life this bitch all she had to do and i say this all the time a woman a woman will spend her time cutting your balls off and a sure. guy and this is for the ladies a guy will always find somebody else to pin those balls back on yeah. so yeah if you're if you're you got a good dude man Make make the compromise because we're we're way more scarce than you think you are. And as we get older, we get better. The value as, is higher, too. And as you get older, because we represent women's value based on their looks and their sexual resources. Right. Their fertility. That value have, goes down. That goes down. That yeah. And you That's could, the societal you, currency that we we have, which is the the hot. We, we talk about it all the time. I talk about the Super Bowl, the, yeah. the box of the Super Bowl. Who's in the owner's box, right? It's it's the Fran owner of the Tarkenton, team, the owner of the names. team, the Hall of Fame, former Hall of Famer, Jamie Fox, celebrity, the, right? And then some some hot chick that yeah. we've never seen before because her <laughs> currency to get in there at the time. The currency is all the same for all four of them. She yeah. has equal value. The hotness got her equal access as the Hall of Fame, the multimillionaire, and the, the Academy Award winner. That is diminishing after well, every Super Bowl. Right. She ain't going to be there for <laughs> she ain't gonna be there 10 <laughs> seasons from now. It ain't happening. Robert De Niro will still have a place. He can yeah. get in somebody's box. Yeah. 
And it's good. And listen, whatever you get in life, use what you got. But understand, it's finite. Yeah. It absolutely yeah. is finite. Yeah. It ain't going to last forever. Yeah. So it's it's an interesting. As soon as I, I saw him get up to kiss her, people would say, oh, you're nitpicking. I'm not. It's this is a he sat down. He was like, oh, you're throwing a kiss at me. I'll throw a kiss at you. She was like, no, you get up and kiss me on my lips. And she was like, he and he sure enough got up. But the minute he got somebody that listened to her, she was doomed. To him, yeah. She was, she was doomed. done. Well, that's the problem with those experiments when you actually, if you can swap out and then find somebody, you go, oh, this is, this is nice. This isn't, it isn't about me. It, yeah. it isn't, it isn't all me. So a lot of times we're, we're as faithful as our options. Yeah. So oh, that's, if you that's have a multiple, long lesson, you're right. Yeah. That's how faithful that guy was. Yeah. The second his options ran out, he's like, uh, and here, here's I the crazy thing. Be together forever. If he, she wanted to get married, she wanted to have kids, she wanted a house. He was working to get all of those things. That wasn't enough. She wanted it all now, and so she figured she would issue an ultimatum to make him do it. And then the and the part, but the part, the part she didn't think about was, oh, you're giving him options to see what a horrible bitch you are. And soon as that happened, it was so. Even when they hooked up for their three weeks, you he was just like, "Well, eh, let's get away." We like, she couldn't even. But he, and the thing was, he was trying to give her a chance. She went through his phone. She <laughs> went through his phone like just ratchet shit on the show. But it was it was an interesting dime. Let's do a watch. Let's do a we'll do a watch. And listen to it. If you want to check it out, people, you can see these little innuendos, all these lessons that we could because the, there you go. It's a the, real the time lesson, breakdown. It happens. So it, and I could see these archetypes, you know, the controlling dude who 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 is overly aggressive because the woman is sweet and she's she's letting him do so he takes advantage naturally because he can take advantage. The overbearing chick, the money hungry bitch. The, the guy who's too nice, the guy who's nice and thoughtful, but not everything she wants because so she wants something better to, to it just every archetype. It was really interesting scientific experiment. But let's get into some listener mail. What, what, what sure, do we got? Bud. Sure, bud. Uh, so we put out the word uh, through all our social media and we always go uh, with with Patreon. And let's first. say this to so the people that listen to the show. Whenever you've got a question, send it. We'll answer it. Yeah, we'll answer it. Even if we got a guest, we'll answer it. And we're we're, we're moving to do some stuff where we're gonna have some call in uh, people calling in and we're talking to them live. So okay, so here's one. Uh, somebody from Instagram wrote, uh, "What do you do when first meeting a woman and you're blanking on things to talk about? You're bl just oh. blanking. Yeah, like you see a girl, she's attractive, and you're just like." Ah, I want to say something, but I'm not sure what to say or okay. I'm not sure what to talk about, even if I want to compliment her, let's say. I've never met a woman who doesn't like to talk about herself. Mm. And uh, one people of the in things, general like to people, talk about everybody themselves. likes yeah. to talk about herself. But what you what in order to create the spark, as we uh, put it, yeah. you have to create it. You have to as a man, you got to create the dossier. What I mean by the dossier is what her likes are, what her likes aren't, what she does, what she, the type of person. And, and you get that, info. how do you get that information? I say this over and over again. When you, when somebody meets you, how do they know who you are? You tell them. Um, you don't just go, oh, I, I'm bad. I got a big dick. I got a, I got a race car. I got it. That's, I mean, it's not blatant, but based on the subtext of your actions, you communicate who you are, right? So as a guy who's interested in somebody and is pursuing somebody, what you want to do is be the best person you could be. You want to be the guy who can anticipate what her needs are. Uh, uh, you want to be able to anticipate what her needs are no matter what. And the way you do that is you got to talk to her. If she has a peanut allergy, you should know. So you don't take her to Thai food and she ends up dead or with an yeah. EpiPen 
And, um, if she doesn't like outdoorsy stuff, if well, she does saying, like, well, he's saying the first time you're meeting, meaning I would assume he means like you see a girl at a bar or at the, the elevator or some shit. But I'm getting to that. Here's the okay. point. Ask questions. If you don't have something to say, ask questions. But those questions need to be open-ended. What do I mean by an open-ended question? You Not tell yes me. or no. You don't want to do a yes or no question because then there's an easy How way old are you? Shorten. 26. Yeah, there you Where go. do you work at? So-and-so-and-so. And so. I work in the hospital. Uh, what do you do? I'm a nurse. It's just very abrupt, and they can stop right there. You want something that's going to spark more of a conversation. So, yeah. So maybe you go, what do you do for a living? I'm a nurse. Wow, that's interesting. What about your life made you want to be somebody who helps people? Mm. Yeah, now she's got it's got to become more of a philosoph philosophical story that tells you something about is. her background. She of can't how say she went into nursing. If you go ahead and ask me that question, Harry, and I'll give you uh, what made you want to what about your life made you want to go into nursing? And uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, See? you can't go yes. <laughs> um, you know, she might go. She might go, well, I was really looking for something to do. And it's, I saw this ad and such and such and such. I just took the job. I needed a job. So are you not into helping people? I mean, because that's a weird kind of job to take that if you're not into, if you don't have the empathy or the so-and-so so to be somebody who serves somebody, what is that not what you think? She has to explain that. Yeah. So open-ended questions ex gives her an opportunity, first of all, to think about who she is and to, to, to kind of be honest about who she is so that you can pick up these questions. Um, uh, what's your favorite color, blue? What is the What does the blue, the color blue represent to you? Like, how does it make you feel? What? That's a weird question. Yeah, but I mean, people, there's a reason why people, you know, people pick certain colors and it may, gives them a feeling. What's, What's the reason the, that's your favorite color? What do Even you mean? something like that. She'll go, like, what do you mean? When you're a kid, what happened that made blue out of all the amazing colors that there are? Why blue? I don't know. Well, think about it and tell me. There has to be a reason. I mean, we all do. I have to assume that we do things for reasons or are you a person that just or you go, is reactional when i was a kid when i was a kid i saw a red sports car that my uncle drove and that's why i've always loved red since that time you know, and that represented to me strength or this yeah. or that so and then then it's a it's all about what type of person they are and how much you connect with what they're answering it's not a guarantee but it's the opening Right, and it gives you an opportunity to explore who they are. So I, I um I ran into two pickup artists who actually listen to the show and they go, Oh, we do pickups nice. to we you wanna you should come out with us and, and we could do pickup and I was like, Nah, I'm good. Um because although I I understand that a lot of the pickup artist stuff works, but it's a predatory act from a from the context of somebody not someone being disingenuous and the bottom line is if we haven't learned anything from this whole will smith thing is that uh people no matter how rich and famous they are doesn't mean they're happy and one of the reasons why i think they're not happy is because they haven't defined what their ethical their ethical place is they don't if you're not doing unless you're a sociopath if you're doing things that disingenuous, even if you're winning, even if you're getting laid every time you go out, at some point in time, you have to reconcile with the fact that you're not a good person, that you're not in control. You know, um, Will Smith is a, I think he's worth $400 million. Did you hear that noise? Yeah. What is that? that? Is that the keyboard again? I don't know what it is. I, I don't know what made that noise, but I'm interested to find out what the fuck it was. It's not but, the iPad, right? No. Huh. Um, but the but the uh, so here's a situation where somebody has not 
it's, it's not really defined what their happiness is. They haven't defined what's fulfilling to them. They haven't even given thought about this. And so what I'm realizing is happiness is not attached to the money you make or the prestige. I mean, look, the bottom line, I get it. Nobody wants to starve or not have a place to stay. or do. But even when you find those things, when you find, moreover than not, these people who make in millions of dollars are still not happy because there's no ethical code. There's no philosophical code that they live by that they can be proud of in terms of this is who I am and, and I'm a good person. And as much as you find people who are evil and they do horrible things and they take advantage of people, never seen them happy. I mean, you and I, Harry, we know dudes who are selling out True. theaters. Yeah. Who Making are tens of thousands of dollars every tens weekend. Tens of thousands of dollars, sometimes millions of dollars, who are not happy with who they are because they haven't really miserable. defined. Yeah. Miserable, not even not happy. Here's, I, I've said this a hundred times, man, and I'm not, probably said it on the show. Uh, Will Smith would rather risk his old career, his entire career, so that he could not go home in a limo with Jada being mad at him. That's how important her approval is. That's insane. I mean, when you think about that's mind boggling that she would actually think that he would think more of five other other black people in the world have had an Oscar. He's getting an Oscar and he's really he's willing to risk all of that mm. just so that he can have the acceptance of this woman who, in my opinion, doesn't even give a fuck about him. Yeah. So. Yeah. The, the importance of having a substance to who you are as a person so that you can look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm worthy because I'm kind, because I'm civil, because I'm generous, because I'm ethically a good person. It carries more weight than you can understand because when you are, are um, how should I put it? Uh, I want to say bereft of... of of uh, disgrace or bereft of evil, you know you're you're a kind person, and nobody can besmirch your 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 uh, your reputation. The confidence exudes from you. It exudes from you because nobody can question who you are. When you're faking it and you're lying, even if you're winning, you are always on the edge of getting exposed. At least you believe so. What if I get exposed? And the stress of that is is horrifying. It's horrifying. And it hurts. Yeah. You imagine you. I mean, imagine the, the the pain that Will Smith is going through now, after this, when the crit criticism of him and he, you're a clown and you this and you you're trying. There was the entrapment and everything that he was trying to get away with, get away from, which is was his emasculation and his uh. And his emasculation and his his lack of validation from his woman is tenfold now. And then this woman says, "Ah, he shouldn't have done it because I'm not a woman that needs protecting." Like it's it, the insanity right. of wanting to get your cup filled with somebody who doesn't have any coffee. You know, just yeah. an ice queen. So you 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 gotta. So when a guy is going, what do I? What do I say when I get stuck? Ask questions, open-ended questions, so that she can talk about herself. Because ultimately, the, the this initial meeting is so that you have a, a contextually you're getting to know this person, so that you know how to navigate the spark, which is knowing, being because you're saying I have the ability to listen to you and read what your needs are, and even in some cases give you, satisfy those needs when you haven't even uh, officially um, defined them for yourself because I'm ahead of you. So, sure, I mean, you got to travel. You got to read. You got to have things to talk about. I mean, and if, you, if you're living your best life, you're going to do that anyway. But the reality is... They don't always want to hear you talk. They want to talk. They want to express. I've never had a, a dude that I was counseling or working with who said to me that they were asking open-ended questions. And in the first half hour of talking to them, you found about the divorce, how many kids, 
how the husband ain't shit, the ex-husband ain't shit, or the, the ex-boyfriend ain't shit, you this to that, I want to grow up to be this, I want to do this, I want to that, I'm in school for that, but they just talk. Because people want to be validated the same way people you want to be People want to tell their story. Absolutely. So I think that, does that answer it? I think that I answers I think so, it. yeah, I yeah. think that answers it. The, the fallback is to ask open-ended questions is so that, and practice those questions. You know, just don't, you don't have to do it on the fly. This is something you know that, that always drives me crazy is how um, you know that there's going to be objections, you know, especially when you approach a woman that you, because the object, because everybody's the same. I always say this, everybody's the same, um, but everybody thinks they're different. Everybody thinks that they're so uniquely different, but nobody takes a shit face in the tank. Nobody faces the wall. Everybody, out of all the millions of people that have sat on a toilet, everybody sits on the toilet the same way. So we're really not that unique. And so we want to, everybody wants to be validated. And somebody wants to be interested, wants to know that you're interested in who they are. And if you're trying to date her, why wouldn't you be? You know, you may not be interested in exactly what she's talking about, if, if she's talking about a subject that you don't like, but you need to know that this is something that's important to her, which is the compromise in any relationship. I mean, how many times does that happen, Harry, where you, yeah, you know, did things? Sure, I've done plenty of things that I, you know, you, you do for the benefit of the other person. That but it comes from a sincere from place. Yeah, from I want to take care of her, I want to make her happy, I will do this for her, even though I'd rather sit at home, right? right. But it's about... Hey, I can't just do that. That's not fair to her. That's not the life that she wants to lead. Right. All the time. And so we're I'll not do saying that. do everything. No, not everything, but pick and choose. Like, you know what? This would be something that, that's worth our time together. Yeah. And this, this is important to her. That, and it's if important it's something... to her, and I'll do it for her because I expect her to do important things for me as well. Exactly. There's a, and, and if it's something that you don't want, Right. If it's something that you don't want, what you what you also want to do is you want to go, hey, um, this is not necessarily something that I want to do. I don't mind doing it. It's not really my thing, but we could go. So at least you both know that what the deal is and what. Yeah. Yeah. Because if I can make sacrifices for you, then you can make sacrifices for me. So you, yeah. but you, you can't even get to well, that. We talked about that. You know, I, I've been in situations because sometimes what happens for whatever reason within the confines of a relationship is not only do they want you to to do the thing, then then it becomes you don't look like you're enjoying this. They want you to actually pretend that you like it. Yeah, they want. And sometimes you don't like it. And it's OK if you don't. Because it doesn't really work in reverse. It's weird. Guys do not give like if you go, hey, I'm going to watch football. And she goes, eh, I don't like football. You're like, great. Don't give a shit. I'm still watching. Like right. they, you don't as but a guy. You're also you don't go, not asking her to watch not, it with you. Don't, you. you don't go. What the fuck do you mean? You don't like why don't you like football? Why wouldn't you like football? You're not even going to try. You're not even gonna also, you're not going to make it? you're not going to make her do and something. I won't, yeah, because it's not but, pleasure. It's like it's like it's like making somebody fuck you. It's never going to be good. No, it's never going to. You don't good. want that. You want the other person to want. So but my point is in you in those situations, it's OK to go to something and do something that you don't necessarily want to do for yourself because you're doing it for somebody else. But you do have to make that known. Right. Right. So the context of when you run out of gas, ask questions, ask questions, sincere questions, listen, pay attention and ask other open-ended questions. And some, a lot of times they'll do all the talking. Not only that, well, this will be beneficial to you understanding who this person is. And even in a lot of cases, finding out whether or not this person is worth your time. Because here's the other thing is to be to be so open and 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 interesting that you can have these conversations for ends on end, never run out of things to talk about. But why do that with somebody who you have already learned that you're incompatible with? What if you're that horse face bitch that's oh, all geez. about a money grubbing horse face bitch from the the ultimatum? Soon as she said that, each you could see each guy was instantly turned off. Less attractive, sir. Yeah. Less attractive. And then, so why why are we continuing this 
conversation, we're not on the same page. Guys, which, what it is is guys will do it because, again, they're worried about, well, what if I don't find anything else? Yeah. I don't want to make her mad because if she goes away, I, I might not. It took me so I long to find this one. I might not be able one. to fuck her. Yeah. She's already, keep in mind, she's already not fucking you. That's that's already established. And what you're doing is you're willing to give up your manhood and your own integrity for the possibility of somebody going, I'm going to fuck you. It's never going to work that way. And also, how can you find the right person if you're with this person? If, yeah. you're, with the, if you're spending all your time with the wrong person. If you're with the horse face gold oh, digger, bitch. Secretariat. <laughs> Sea biscuit. Sea biscuit. You like sea biscuit. I like sea. Biscuit, I like sea biscuit so. better. Yeah, you're right. What else uh, we got? We got another one here. Uh, this. How one much from- time we got left? Because I want to make sure we get it all in. Well, we'll we'll do another one uh, exclusively on Patreon. So this is the regular show. We'll answer okay. one more here, and then we'll keep going on Patreon for the Patreon okay. listeners. Uh, let's see. I've been on a couple first dates recently, and everything goes great until things get physical. I don't try to give off nervous energy and I'm actively kissing foreplay, et cetera. But my dick is like some like a soft medium. I'm trying not to overthink, but I'm still caught ruining a great experience. Hmm. OK, so I guess what he's talking about is his nervousness is becoming his erectile dysfunction. It's, it's not uncommon. Um, I'm trying to think if it's happened to me. Uh Used to happen to me in threesomes. I know that's kind of uh, <laughs> not helpful, but yeah. <laughs> but it is because you know, in th- you know, whenever I was in a, in a in a situation where I was gonna have a threesome, the the pressure of wanting to b- being the pressure of being able to satisfy both individuals was so extensive that you could really get worked up in your head because you understand the magnitude of what the 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 task at hand it's, two it's vaginas daunting. four daunting. tits you got women i mean it's hard enough to to satisfy woman woman much less to start two and so i would you know i i had a i had a there was a thing i used to always say you got to always you got to get in the pussy as quick as you can. As soon as you get a semi, you got to get it in and start fucking because then it, 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 you, you relieve some of the anxiety. But I, I think what's happening, too, is uh, he's worked up about the performance. Is he going to be all right? And, pl- and plus, if he's had some erectile dysfunction, even if it's on a mental level, you're already worried about not being able to about perform. that happening again right and you gotta yeah. you gotta understand that even though um even though she's you, you're not gonna know i mean look i mean she could have some dry ass pussy because she's not responding as well but the pressure i've always i say this on stage i go it's easier to be the canvas than to paint the masterpiece you know you um so the pressure is on you to respond um I think that sometimes we are also feel like we should always be ready for the sexual experience. And what's even more attractive is when you say, listen, I don't know if I'm um, emotionally in a place where I'm ready yet. Do you know how hot you are? The fact that you you are telling somebody that you may not be emotionally ready to copulate because you because it's 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 you're not comfortable enough i mean how often has that happened to guys all the time all the time and all the, time. the difference is because the understanding is the understanding is that we should always be ready that anytime somebody sure. to, we're expected to be ready yeah and at any what, given point and I'll, I'll ask you this harry what happens when you go yeah i'm not really sure if this is the right time or if you're the right person. How does all of that a sudden affect- that intrigues them and they get more interested in it. They're, they, they're all of a sudden like, wait, what now? They, they decide they have to prove it to themselves because nobody wants to be rejected. So psychologically you go, well, why not? No, no, let's try whatever we got to do to make this work. It's very weird when you make something exclusive to somebody, they're more eager to try to make it happen or to try to, to, to get at it. Yeah, there's, there's no shortage of diamonds. Right. <laughs> what they do is they 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 uh, they control the supply and demand. 
And by controlling the supply and demand, you create you create value. You create more value. Um, and the reality is, this is not. And I don't say to use this as a tactic, because I'm. I, you know, Harry. I'll, I, you know that I say all the time. Never use a tactic. No, it has the, to be legitimate. Because real you, game is no game. Yeah. If you're nervous, you can say, listen, I'm a little nervous. I really like you, and I want this to go well, and I'm a little uncomfortable. I understand as a man, you, uh, those are things you shouldn't say. But what, you don't, what you're not understanding is the level of comfort, the level of being the comfort that you have to in your own skin to honestly be honest about the fact that you may not be ready. Man, that's a... That's a it, it says volumes about, just like I talked about the girl throwing a kiss and then waiting for the guy to get up to kiss her. It's, it's, it speaks volumes about you saying, my comfort, what I like and what I don't like is important to me. It, even if it's not important to you, that's fine. We can move on. But I'm not willing to be awkward or to make myself uncomfortable for you simply because you've chosen me we we need to choose each other and i think that's a really important thing yeah i think that's great well that wraps it up for this uh this the the mainstream edition we're going to keep going over at patreon and if you want to join us sign up for patreon that's where we do bonus content we're going to be trying to do more stuff we might be doing the watch along over there uh of the uh the ultimatum yeah and so patreon.com slash manschool202 so you know join us over at patreon that's where all the fun stuff's happening and uh we're gonna continue answering listener mail everybody check us out gybb get your balls back wwdd what would dante do to sexual revolutions being podcasted yo i love y'all man keep sending those questions in all right